Hello, it's half past three. I think I last put uh, some coals in here um, eight o'clock last night. So let's have a look, see if we've got any embers. That's what I was excited about last video, by the way. Uh, Le bras. Yeah, look, that there is an ember. Right, so in which case, I put, yeah, let's have the camera there. Oh man, that is, right, just in case you don't believe me. Okay, so, see that? 111 degrees. That has survived more than 12 hours of being surrounded in ash. Well, that's a great insulator. That That's brilliant. I'm, I'm excited about this fuel. This is the stuff I was on about. I um I talked with Stephen J. James about it and he says due to the nature of um the uh, hopper in his boiler he uses uh, the small nuggets or beads of um fuel so th this wouldn't be suitable for his uh, purposes although uh, and that's the other thing as well like um if it ashes up he needs to deal with the fire grate uh, whereas with myself I like it ashing up because it's much easier to, for me to deal with ash than it is to deal with clinker. I mean, when you when you got clinker, you're like, oh, okay, um, is this uh, um, the, the clinker? I I, I want to burn it again. The problem with that is it's just it's a magnet for uh, for ash, and it clogs up the the fire so it doesn't breathe anymore. Um, yeah, 100 degrees. Now, in theory, if I was very good, I'd pick them out, I'd wrap them in the orange peel, but what I'm trying to do at the moment is to see, have I got any other embers? You know what? One moment, please. I've got an ingrown toe now, and it's bad. If I do this, I'll be better able to see them now. Uh, yep, I've just seen, there's one on the tip of my poker, and another one rolled off. Now what this is telling me to do is basically put a bunch of coals in towards the end of the night and then when I get a bunch of and then close the vents all the way up and then I'll have some embers but also I should be doing it somewhat earlier in in the day not not a three o'clock and then I won't need to relight the fire But no, th this is very promising, you see. Um, even though I am going to be manually relighting this fire. Well, nearly all aspects of fire making are manual. There's nothing automated in this fire. Whilst I am going to be using a bit of flame to get this fire going again, I will be able to just use uh, kindling and get it going that way. Um, yeah, no, I I like this stuff. And the other thing about it, because it's a practical fuel for me to use, whereas the anthracite, whilst w it did work, it was a less practical fuel. Um, no, it's, it's great. What that means is I can uh, order in the cheaper uh, wood, the one which has got higher moisture content, stack it up, leave it for a year or two, and in the meantime, have a little bit of kiln dried stuff, which is just ready to burn, and, uh, one moment please, whatever you do, don't buy it from the supermarkets, because their prices are rubbish. 
seven pounds for a little bag. I mean, it's kiln dry, but so what? It's just, it's rubbish. Um, point being, I can order in the cheaper fuel, let it dry here for, um, yeah, two, two years is not, not a major hassle. And in the meantime, for that two years, use this uh, smokeless coal, um, which ashes up nicely. Yeah, I, f I think in future I'm, I'm going to be using more coal. Because um, I'm really quite pleased with this product. And the nice thing as well, if I had a bigger stove, I could justify using more logs. But as you've seen, the way I have to deal with logs, and in fact I don't have any to hand at the moment, so I have to go outside and get some. Um, but yeah, just ordering some wood. And then order it in the summer when it's... Uh, In fact, that's the way to do it. All, order wood in the summer when it's when it's cheaper, and then um, wait a minimum of eighteen months for the uh, the the winter afterwards, and then I'll have a nice supply of logs. The thing is, even using the logs, because as you can see, I can only put one side. Then I've got like about yeah about five or four inches here with nothing burning, which is all right because unless I'm very cold then um, the heat from one or two logs stacked on top of one another is sufficient to heat up this room. I mean, quite easily get up to 27 degrees that way. Um, but in, in the future, I'll be able to load up the entire bed with fuel, and then I'll get a more even heat, which is just better all around. Anyway, there's my sticks. One moment, oh, hang on. yes, one moment, please. And we're back. So, um, yeah, really, um, really quite impressed with this, uh, with this, with this, uh, with these coal briquettes. Um, and also, not really relevant to the fire, but. A lot easier to scoop up because they got these nice rounded edges so you just your shovel goes in quite easily whereas with anthracite being that it's um, jagged edges you got to be a bit um, forceful with it so uh, yeah I th these coal dust uh, coal, coal dust um, ovoids, very, very good fuel. Hey, look, we've got a fire. I've been thinking so much about how I'm going to use this coal and plan out my uh, wood burning strategy and staggering uh, the next orders of, uh, of fuel that I forgot to myself that. We've got a fire going, just with some orange peels. That was about 80 pence for five in Aldi. And the oranges were a bit bland, but who, who, who cares? I mean, it's just a bit of flavoured water at that point. Um, well, the advantage being, unlike fruit juice, I don't get heartburn from, from eating fruit. Well, I do, I do from fruit juice, which is why I don't buy it anymore. Quite happy drinking water most of the time. Uh, in fact, I feel like a glass of water. Yeah. Right. We got our fires going, lads. I mean, there was a nice bed of ash, so the wood wasn't struggling to um, alight. The bed of ash was heated, so as we saw, you know, 111 degree. I saw it go up to 125. So 125 degree embers and uh, some nicely dried up bits of citrus peel. Um, 
I, I realise for most people this is just not practical because you don't live somewhere with the chimney, but if you do, I think it's quite a sensible investment to have, have this as a source of heat. Um, my dad's got the best of both worlds. He has a gas um, central heating and his living room has a uh, wood-burning stove, which I must admit is a bit of a nuisance to clean the ash out. Because unlike mine, it doesn't have a nice convenient grate, but it does get the job done. And um, it does burn more efficiently than this. It's got more of an airtight seal. So when you close the vents down, you can snuff it out and uh, you can end up with embers the next day that way. But anyway, speaking of snuffing out, I'll just I'll open that up. So it's got plenty of air to breathe. So it has to get around that ash. Can we shove this one in? Oh dear, my fire bricks come down. Can you see that? At some point, I'll have to get a new fire brick for this. Because um, the one on uh, this side is cracked and the thing is, in theory, you can have a stove with, well, you can just have an open fire. That's the simplest way of getting heat from fuel. But with these fire bricks, rather than pushing the heat out here, where it's not really any goose, it means more of the heat gets reflected out into the room, which is better. Um, again, not mission critical. Uh, so nice to have but not um not absolutely needed <sighs> right thank you for watching my fire and um Because I, I talked about it originally in French, so let's let's do it. Rummage, rummage, rummage. These. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I, t I swear these tongs are worse than chopsticks. This, yeah. This is a really good fuel. This is very convenient, very easy to scoop up. Our fuel merchant selling it for the same price as Amphrasite. So if you if you use anthracite, or even if you just use other types of coal, see what price you can get for this. It's good stuff. Goodbye.